Hey, it's Alex. Welcome back to another Java tutorial. In this video, we're going to be making a Java multiple choice quiz program. This is a great program to learn the fundamentals, so I'm really excited to make this with you. But first, if you're new here, my name is Alex. On this channel, I post a Java tutorial just like this one every single week. Also, if you're looking to get a Java tech, there's a coding bootcamp that I highly recommend, along with a $1,000 discount. All that information is in the link down in the description below. So let's first start by going to File New Java Project together. We'll call this something like my project. Hit finish, and then in the source folder, right click and go to new class. We'll call this multiple choice. Hit this public static void main checkbox and then hit finish. In this program, we're gonna ask the user three questions. We'll get their input, either A, B, C, or D for each question. We'll see if each of those answers matches the answer key, and then we'll print out their score. So let's start with asking the questions. A super simple way to print text to the console is just with the print statement, system.out.println. So we're gonna do this for each question. These can be whatever you want, but I'll just make some quiz questions here. We'll start with an easy one, like what is two plus two? Then we'll make some more print statements down here. where we'll list out the answers, like two, three, four, or five, making sure that our A, B, C, and D are here. We'll use this template to create the next question, like what is the capital of North Carolina? Because I am from North Carolina. We'll say, Raleigh, Durham, Cary, and Winston-Salem. Finally, we'll ask our third question. Did I spell capital right? Is it with an A or an O? I think it's an A. What is the fastest land animal? Tiger, cheetah, giraffe, or wolf? If we save and run this, we see all of those questions get printed out. But if we wanted to answer them, we couldn't enter anything in here. So let's fix that. One of the best ways to get user input like this from the console window is with something called a scanner. So let's make a scanner at the top. As programmers, we like to do things kind of at the top because that's where the setup is. It helps us organize things. So we'll create a scanner object. We'll call it scan. Inside the parentheses, we'll put system.in. This just means that we're gonna be getting input from this console window. That's what system.in is. We get some red underlines because it doesn't actually know what this scanner is. So we have to import it. So we'll click import scanner java.util. That creates this import statement at the top, which lets us use this cool scanner code to get input. So just real quick to show you how the scanner works. After the questions are printed out, we'll just do scan.next three times, okay? If we save and run this, you'll see that now we can actually type in the console window and we can hit enter and then keep typing, but we can only do it three times. As soon as we hit enter, it takes that value and does something with it. We haven't done anything with it. We're just getting that value and going to the next line. So we need to store these three answers somehow. And I think a great way to do this would be with an array. So let's set up an array of empty values that we can replace with the answers that we enter. These are gonna be strings, since we're gonna either enter A, B, C, or D. We're not gonna enter numbers or doubles. It's gonna be a string. So to make a string array in Java, you type string, these square brackets, we'll name it responses and we'll set it equal to basically empty values. So to do that, we'll just type these empty strings here. So now let's set these values in the array that are now empty to what the user enters. And to do that, we type the name of the array, which is responses. We'll say responses at index zero is gonna be equal to what the user enters. Index zero means the first element. So that'll be this one. We'll set the next one, responses of one, and then responses of two. 
if we save and run this and we enter things like a, b, c, we still can only enter three values and they're being set to the string array, one element at a time, but then we're not actually printing anything or doing anything with them. To make sure this is working, we'll just print it out. We'll print out responses of zero, one and two, save and run. Let's do maybe A, B, C, and we see A, B, and C are printed out. So now we have the responses and we want to compare them to the answers, but we don't have any answer key here. So let's create an array called answers that's equal to what the answers are here, the order of answers for question one, two, and three. The answer to 2 plus 2 would be C here. So this first one will be C. The answer to the second question is A. And the answer to the third question is B. Save. And then we could, what we could do is say, if responses of 0 is equal to answers of 0, then we could increase their score by 1. And then if responses of one is answers of one plus one, if responses of two equals answers of two, add one. And then their score would be three out of three, two out of three, one out of three, or zero out of three. But what if we had a quiz that was like a hundred questions long? You wouldn't want to make a hundred if statements. So let's use a for loop. A for loop helps you go one by one through however many times you want very, very easily. So let's create a for loop. To do that, you type four. We'll start at zero, we'll end at three. Each time we'll go up by one. And I know for loops look pretty confusing, so I'll explain everything line by line again at the end. We'll say if the response is equal to the answer. So if responses of i, I'll explain why we're doing i here in a second. But if responses of i is equal to equals ignore case, we'll use equals ignore case in case they put a capital A or a capital B. If that's equal to answers of I, then we'll increment a score. And we don't have a score variable yet, but we'll say score plus plus. This adds one to the score variable. We don't have it, so we'll add it up here in score. Right now it's zero because they haven't answered any correctly. But if they do answer one correctly, then they'll get one added to their score. And it'll do that for each question. Again, I'll explain this in depth after we run it, just to make sure you understand everything. Now the last step here is just, just print out that score. So we'll print out score. We'll add that score variable in here. And we'll say out of three. So this could be zero out of three, one out of three, et cetera. So if we save and run this, we get our three questions popping up. We'll answer, what is two plus two? Four, so we'll enter C, hit enter. Capital of North Carolina, A, hit enter. Fastest land animal, say we don't know this one and we put C, hit enter. We'll get our score two out of three. This is pretty cool. If we run this again and say, we do all capitals, C, A, and maybe we do know the answer this time, B, we get three to three because we used equals ignore case, equals ignore case here. So it doesn't care if it's lowercase or uppercase as long as it matches the answers array. However, if we do kind of gibberish here, we'll get zero out of three because we didn't enter A, B, C, or D. Let's run again, we'll do A, 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 we get one out of three. So let's go line by line now. When we click the green run button, we run code in the main method. The first line of code, we see that we're making a scanner object with this system.in. A scanner helps us get input from a user and system.in means we're getting it from this console window here. We saw red underlines before, so we clicked on code that would import the Java util scanner. 
This just makes sure that we have that code to make the scanner work. Next, we have an array of strings called answers set equal to C, A, and B, which is the answers in order to the three questions. And then we have a string array of responses that are blank now because we haven't gotten the responses yet. But when we capture the responses, we're gonna set each element in that array. We print out the first question here, which is a set of five print line statements. We print the next question and we print the next question. We print all these th three questions at the same time, one line at a time. Next, we wait for the user to enter something. They could enter gibberish, but you know, they should enter A, B, C, or D. So we await their response with this. As soon as they hit enter, it takes that value and sets it equal to the first element of the responses array, which is index zero. Next, we wait on the second answer, set that to responses of index one, which is the second value. And then we wait on the third answer and set that to the third element in the responses array. As soon as that enter is hit, we store that value and we go down here. We create a score variable that's set to zero. So score is zero right now. Then we hit this for loop. We have an integer i equal to zero. i is zero. Since zero is less than three, we run the code inside of the curly braces. We hit an if statement. If responses of zero, because remember i is zero right now. If responses of zero, which is in this case, if we go down, responses of zero is a. If a equals ignore case, answers of i, i is zero, if we go up, answers of zero is c. So if a equals c, increase the score by one. a does not equal c, so score is zero. We go to the top, i is now one. One is less than three. Responses of one is a. If that equals answers of one, answers of one is a. Since a equals a, score is now one. Go back to the top, increment i by one, i is now two. Two is less than three. If responses of two, which is A, equals answers of two, which is B, A does not equal B, so we don't run the code in here. Go back to the top, I is now four. Four is not less than three, so we break out of the for loop. So we checked each answer one at a time and only incremented the score by one because they only got one answer correct. Lastly, we print out a score, which is one out of three. And so that's why we see score one out of three right here. I hope you enjoyed this Java multiple choice quiz program. I had a really great time making it. Um, I could zoom out here a little bit so you can see all the code. There you go. Don't forget this import statement at the top. So thanks, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.